people don't get that like my body does not feel things the same way your body feels them like you know the heat to you may be bearable to me i am covered in bees may have androgynous traits thinks of themselves as half male half female is it a bit of a kick in the nuts to know that your, your gender identity is really kind of a symptom <laughs> will not have many close friends hi i don't know how far i would have made it without without that diagnosis in 2009 i really don't so i'm really glad they are recognizing that these are symptoms and traits hopefully diagnosing more females and realizing that it's it's not just a boy's disorder So hello you wonderful people, it's been a really long time I feel like since I made an autism related video and I definitely need to make one today because recently I read something that was the most nail on head accurate portrayal of my own autism that I have ever seen and I feel like it may well apply to a lot of you guys too because I know a lot of my subscribers you are quite similar to me in that you're either trans or genderqueer you're autistic, you have all of these things and that means it's quite likely that atypical autism signs and symptoms are probably going to apply to you too. So atypical autism, it basically seems to be mostly a buzzword for the signs and symptoms that will be present in female autistics, whether that's trans male now autistics but anyone who was assigned female at birth it is likely that your autistic symptoms are more likely to be atypical than typical however not everyone that presents with atypical autism symptoms is female there are males who also have these symptoms and I will link the uh the full post it was on an Instagram page that I found this an Instagram page called life in autism world and they've got a lot of really really interesting posts and a lot of very very relatable posts but this one like every single thing they listed was completely nail on head for me so I will link the full post below because I don't think there'll be time for me to go through every single thing they listed but basically atypical autism traits I think the original source for these they say was highly gendered they had referred to it as she 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 all the way through because generally speaking as i say atypical autism does present in females but of course all not all females are girls so uh they've retyped the the whole thing with gender neutral language uh which is cool of them but anyway they've split it into a few different categories so the first category they split it into is appearance and personal habits we tend to have an eccentric personality which may be reflected in appearance. We tend to be youthful for our age in looks, dress, behaviour and tastes. I would say yes again um, to all of that. Usually a little more expressive in face and gesture than other autistic people. This was the one that I thought was really interesting. Sorry, ignore my voice. It's been doing this a lot lately. I don't know what is up with it, but it's just getting raspier and raspier. And that's kind of cool. I can kind of live with it, but it's, <laughs> it sounds a little bit annoying recorded. Sorry about that. But yeah, the the more expressive in face and gesture thing, like there is this huge stereotype that all autistic people... They avoid eye contact, they talk in a monotone, they don't look at you, they're not expressive at all, they have no facial expressions. And that was very much me when I was a teenager, that I was, I was very, very monosyllabic, I spoke like this, I would just stare you in the face. People literally thought I had facial paralysis because of the fact that I never smiled, like I had no facial expressions. But I don't think that was autism, I think that was depression. I was so depressed combined with the autism that I just didn't have the the energy and the oomph to even smile or put any energy into my words but you know now like I'm quite expressive I tend to slip into strange silly voices at times I'm very flaily I'm always knocking drinks out of people's hands when I'm talking um so yeah the really expressive thing I think it's really interesting and something else that this page life in autism world talks about quite a lot 
is the fact that autism is a spectrum and actually a lot of the typical symptoms the polar opposite can also be an autistic symptom so this monosyllabic lack of expressiveness thing that you can get with autism you can actually get the opposite and you can have really expressive flaney people they can also be autistic but here's the interesting thing they say also may have androgynous traits thinks of themselves as half male half female and i think that goes for a lot of us that yeah we often tend to relate more to being male than female but a lot of us it's kind of like not all the way like we want to physically transition and become fully male all the time it's kind of like yeah there's there's kind of like a bit of female there but i mostly feel like myself when i'm dressed male kind of thing and i thought that was really interesting too although it's, it's kind of is it a bit of a kick in the nuts to know that your your gender identity in in a way is really kind of a symptom <laughs> Oh no, that's kind of weird. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting is may not have a strong sense of identity and can be very chameleon-like, especially before diagnosis. Well, I've been diagnosed for over a decade now and I am still extremely chameleon-like. And that was something that I was actually, before I read this, I was going to make a video about that and how I find it weird that people tend to think of autistic people as being very stuck in routines very patterns routines rigid control doesn't like change and yet i'm a complete chameleon with my style and with everything like my wardrobe a large portion of my wardrobe isn't even goth it's kind of cosplay items that i like to wear in my everyday life and even when it comes to goth stylistics i have different segments of my wardrobe that are, you know some of them are kind of floaty vampire -y goth some of them are more new goth some of them you know i i get into different things and i really fall into them and and so i have five closets and they're all exploding and it's ridiculous uses control as a stress management technique rules discipline rigid in certain habits which may contradict their seeming unconventionality so we seem unconventional, we're, we're quite eccentric, uh, we're quite chameleon-like, we, we seem like we'd be kind of down for anything and yet we're actually very rigid in a lot of other respects. We do still have that classic autistic rigidity um, and I would say the control as a stress management technique, that relates to me when it comes to eating disordered behaviours and also like my past drug addictions. Um, it doesn't sound like control and drug addiction would go together, but for me it was control of emotions. I can take this, I can switch off my emotion, it's control of emotions. It was it was all a control thing for me. Um, usually happiest at home or in other controlled environments. <sighs> How many hours a week do I spend sitting right in this chair? How many hours a week do I spend out of the house? Hmm, yes, that one I related to. Um, <laughs> anyway there's there's a few I'll skip over because I say there's there's like not time to read all of these but pretty much all of them nail on head um so one of them was often musical artistic I think that goes for a lot of us a lot of us are quite creative it may not be music or art it may be writing but um yeah and below that they say may have a strong savant skill or strong talents which I guess for me I don't know that I'd, I'd class it as being good enough to be a savant skill, but um, but obviously like writing has always been my thing throughout life. Maybe when I was a child, I guess it was kind of a savant skill because my vocabulary was just way beyond anything that that should have been coming out of the mouth of a very young child um, and it, that was reflected in my writing but um, given I kind of lapsed out of it for quite a few years in my 20s I feel like I've fallen behind and I'm not as good as I should be now. However that flows into may have been a self-taught reader, been hyperlexic as a child, will possess a wide variety of other self-taught skills as well which I, th I think obviously, obviously, like we're not really group people we don't enjoy traditional education because it's all in groups so of course our skills are going to be self-taught we would much rather have online learning and do all of that um so that that made sense to me too maybe highly educated but will have to struggle with social aspects of college may have one or many partial degrees well i have one full degree that it took me extra years to complete because they wanted me to do a 
work experience thing and I couldn't find anything that I could deal with so it was like three years later that I finally got my degree. I do have other partial degrees so yeah that one hit home. Um, it says maybe passionate about a course of study or job and then change direction or go cold on it completely very quickly. That happens, yeah, hyperfixations, you get obsessed with something, you get so obsessed with it that you start rotating your whole life around it and then pretty soon you're just like, you just move on and you're done with it and it's it's sucky, I hate it when that happens. And then it says, will often have trouble holding on to a job and may find employment daunting. Oh my god, yes. Um, I actually, when I was younger, I was pretty good at holding on to a job, although only because I would quit before I lost my shit. I would feel I'm gonna lose my shit here pretty soon and I'm just gonna storm out and then I'm gonna lose my reference. So I need to quit so I can keep my reference. So I would quit with like the most ridiculous excuses um, saying, you know, oh, I, I need to quit so I can learn to drive, like, at a part-time job. Like, of course you can learn to drive around a job, but that was one of my excuses to get out of there, because I couldn't say, look, I hate it here so much that I'm going to lose my shit and either hit someone or walk out in a minute. So I need to quit so I can still get my reference. Well, they're not going to give you a reference if you say that, are they? So, um, and employment, uh, hunting for employment used to stress me so hard. Um, you know, even after I told my mum how much it stressed me, she would keep emailing me jobs just like the ones that um, that gave me a nervous breakdown in the first place. And I'd just be thinking, mum, oh my god, you don't know what it does to me whenever I see these emails in my inbox. And then something else it says is that our obsessive fixations, our obsessions, are not necessarily unusual because I think when it comes to typical um, autism they tend to expect you to have quite unusual obsessive interests you know the, the typical boy stuff so uh, train spotting or mathematics or penguins or dinosaurs or something that's, that's a bit weird whereas I think the obsessions that female autistics have are often kind of kind of normal we just really get into them so we you know we might be into cosplay we might be into the various geekery of kind of vampire shows or we might be into fashion or so, something that's quite normal but we just really go at it hard but a lot of um diagnosticians when it comes to autism are not going to see that at, in a typical autism sense they're just going to say oh well you know you're a girl of course you're into fashion that's not weird um but it's like it's the level you're into it though as as i see it um then there's the emotional physical bit which hits a little hard um emotionally immature and emotionally sensitive Hi! <laughs> I find it pretty much impossible to check any of my inboxes ever because there was drama in my inbox two years ago and I am still not going in my inboxes. It's ridiculous. Um, and I'm... And I th this, this can't be uncommon, right? People who are genderqueer male leaning or a trans male, anyone who has basically male characteristics you don't like to be seen as weak, you don't You don't like to be seen as sensitive. Like being called sensitive, you just think, I'm not sensitive, I'm tough, I can take all these things. Um, and eventually you have to realise, no, you're emotionally sensitive, you're actually, actually a bit of a delicate little flower and all of those things that you never fucking wanted to admit to in a million years, unfortunately it's true. Um, anxiety and fear are predominant emotions Yep. Like even even getting too many compliments makes me anxious. Like if if I'm on my Instagram and I get too many compliments in a row, I, I can't read any further. I just have to get right off the app and uh, go scroll some other app for a while because I, I can't I can't deal with 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 anything <laughs> ever. Strong sensory issues. Blah 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 blah. The usual but may not have taste, food, texture issues, which I think is interesting because I do have sensory processing issues, but I've never really had the taste or food texture thing. That's never really got to me. Um, and apparently that is that is commonly absent in atypical autism. Probably given several different prescriptions to treat symptoms, 
yep, <laughs> yep, several different prescriptions. Mm -hmm. Will be very sensitive to medications and anything else they put in their body, so may have had adverse reactions. Now that's fucking interesting because I do have a shitload of chemical sensitivities. Um, there are so many things I cannot put in my body without reacting to them. That is a whole story for another time that I never really felt came from the Asperger's. Like, I feel like I know where that came from and I know what that's all about and that is a video for another time. But it's interesting that maybe the autism does have something to do with it. Nine out of ten have mild to severe gastrointestinal issues, e.g. ulcers, acid reflux, IBS, and so on. <sighs> yep. But um, in my case, I'm pretty sure most of my gastrointestinal stuff comes from the eating disorder, really, I feel like, because the times that I've had the worst issues with my kind of stomach and stuff, it's been after relapses. Um, and that's when everything's really flared up. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had a stomach ulcer mostly from stress and a job I was working at, um, acid reflux. I apparently have a partially paralyzed esophagus, which gives me some kind of reflex, but I don't think it's that bad, or maybe I'm just so used to it because I've had this my whole life, I don't know what it feels like to be normal. Uh, I do have IBS, um, so yeah, I'm really like ticking all the boxes on that one. Um, stims to soothe when sad or agitated, well that's pretty normal for an autistic person. Similarly physical when happy, hand clapping, <laughs> flapping, singing, jumping, running around, dancing, bouncing. Well, well, yeah, I, I, I get quite, I get quite flappy when I'm happy about something. So, uh, so yeah, that was, that was interesting to read because yeah, you, you hear about all the, the kind of the stress stimming, but you don't hear so much about the, about the happy stimming, you know, so it was cool that they mentioned that. Um, prone to temper or crying meltdowns, even in public, sometimes over seemingly small things due to sensory or emotional overload. Yes. Um, yeah, in my case, it's generally temper outbreaks, um, over quite small things. Like we, we had the electrician here the other day and, uh, yeah, you know, when it says even in public, we had an electrician here fixing the lights, like literally this electrician was the clumsiest bastard I've ever met in my life. He was tripping over all my shit. He was smashing my shit up and someone wants to bring in another lamp for him to trip over and smash up and I'm, I'm, you know, and I'd said about six fucking times like there is no room in here and he keeps on pushing and in the end I just, you know, there's no polite way to do it anymore you're at the end of your tether and you just scream at them there I'm fucking not having the fucking lamp in here, you know and you've got like an electrician halfway up a ladder doing things and you feel like an absolute five-year-old throwing a temper tantrum when you when you finished but um you you just reach your fucking limit with people and you you just can't even um and uh yeah you know I've I've had it I remember on holiday in Amsterdam when and this was a sensory thing I guess because there was a heat wave it was so hot in the hotel my most level-headed best mate who had never never said a sharp word to anyone in my presence actually got narked with me and he was like you know come on we're on holiday here like can you not just cheer up and I was like you don't get it dude like you, you don't get what the fucking heat does to me but you sound you do you sound like such a hypersensitive pansy sometimes and people don't get that like my body does not feel things the same way your body feels them like you know the heat to you may be bearable to me it is completely fucking unbearable i am covered in bees i am covered in bees you do not understand why i'm flipping out but in my case i am covered in bees um <laughs> And uh, here's another one. Hates injustice and hates to be misunderstood. Oh lordy lordy. Uh, this is where I tend to dig myself into holes when it comes to online arguments um, because I can't bear being misunderstood and I will clap back and clap back and clap back because I feel like you don't get it. You do not get what I'm trying to say. How can you be misunderstanding me this much? And you know that people do it on purpose because the straw man argument is such a thing. You know, if you state something and they can take one tiny meaningless little piece out of it and turn it into bullshit, like you spelled something wrong. Like I, I rarely spell things wrong. So that's just an example. But 
you know, you spell something wrong, so they go, oh, yes, I'm dumb, you're too dumb to even have this argument. And it's complete straw man. Like, they're not attacking your argument, they're attacking some random thing. But when it's something like that, you feel so misunderstood. Or, you know, if, if you're atypical autistic, I guess, you feel so misunderstood that you absolutely clap back and clap back and clap back. But, you, you know, when when you're a YouTuber and you're clapping back at like thousands of fucking people, obviously you're going to be misunderstood by a certain percentage of them, no matter how eloquent you are and no matter how hard you try. And that is, oh, that drives me the craziest out of fucking anything. Um, <laughs> here's an interesting one. May have a raspy voice, monotone at times when stressed or sad. And I find this interesting because I often lately wonder whether I use my voice incorrectly because I do have vocal damage from smoking but my, my, my voice has always been low and raspy like it doesn't sound particularly different it's only my singing voice that sounds different um but I do have vocal damage and since getting that talking for long periods really fucks my voice and I wonder like do I talk too low for my actual vocal range am I scraping along the bottom of my vocal range and when I should actually be talking like this is this actually how I should be talking and maybe I wouldn't wear down my voice too much and I have tried I have tried pitching my voice up in certain situations um mostly when I've been doing like transformation videos or something and I just wanted to play a character so I tried pitching my voice up and it's it's really hard to, to stick at this pitch this kind of feels artificial to me but I don't know would my voice wear out less easily if I actually tried to speak in this pitch this this kind of artificial to me <laughs> I don't know but I found that interesting and certainly when I was a teenager and I, you know, and I did speak in a monotone and I spoke like this and, you know, when stressed or sad, as it says, um, your voice gets very monotone and raspy because you're just kind of rasping along the bottom of your vocal range and you're just blah, 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 blah like this. But I thought that was interesting. Um, social relationships. Words and actions are often misunderstood by others. Yes. Yep because people don't understand your motivations for things. They don't understand the way that you prioritize things, that certain things that are a priority for neurotypical people are not a priority for you and the way that you think through your logic. So that's where I think it comes from. Perceived to be cold natured and self-centered, unfriendly. Uh, yes, may not come across on YouTube. I think on YouTube, people tend to see me as being fairly warm and bubbly and friendly, but um, and that's, that's, you know, the way I come across is not the way I come across any differently in real life, but the self-centered thing. Oh, fuck yes. That is, that is the main criticism that will be thrown at me by my family is selfish, 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 because I don't like doing stuff with family members and family gatherings and all of that. It's too many people. We don't really have anything in common. I don't understand why it's enjoyable. I don't want to do it. So I'm not really going to go. Um, but that's that's terribly selfish and terribly cold and terribly unfriendly and yeah so all of that clicked um, is very outspoken at times may get very fired up when talking about passion special interests obsessions yes um, obviously obviously from this channel and then this one is quite interesting may even give the appearance of being skilled at social interaction but it is a performance and I would say kind of for me it's it's yeah I think female autistics or atypical autistics we are generally better we, we we look like we can be quite socially skilled which is where we get all the oh you're not autistic you don't look autistic you don't act autistic you're misdiagnosed shit from because we seem quite socially fluent really um but it is a performance and it burns us out very very quickly uh huh doesn't go out much. Will prefer to go out with partner only or children if they have them. Um, and the typist has added, I have a short list of safe people who I prefer to go out with. Oh, this person says they will refuse to go out if none of those people are available. Whereas in my case, I prefer to go out alone. Um, if I had any safe people to go out with, maybe I'd like that. But they're all dead or married to psychopaths. So... <laughs> I don't have any safe people. I, I go out on my own. Um, that's about it. Uh, but at least when you're on your own, you're not tied to anyone, you see. So you can slink off and you can be on your own. That's what I like about going out on my own. Um, 
will not have many close friends, hi, and will not conform to gender stereotypical activities with friends or have get togethers to hang out with friends. When it comes to the gender stereotypical thing, yes. I never really understood kind of girly hangouts and how you do them and all of that. So I would always hang out with guys mostly. Uh, but then of course you have the problem because then when they start dating, you're seen as a threat and you get eliminated. Uh, so basically you have to be fucking them. You have to be fucking your friends in order for them to stay friends with you. That's, you know, and I have such deep rooted issues about this that, um, you know, you, you think you're friends with someone, but, but you're, you're not really, you're, you're, you're just emergency pussy as Chris Rock would put it. He, he called it emergency dick from the flip side of the gender spectrum. But, um, emergency pussy that's what you are you're you're you know you're the female they keep around to to look at and try and hit on but when they get a girlfriend you you get totally ditched um whereas you you see yourself as part of the boys club you see yourself as bros before hoes and they don't and that's how you lose all your friends um <laughs> that's how i lost all my friends anyway we'll have a close friend or friends in school but not once adulthood is reached Oof, that's painfully true isn't it <laughs> Um, may or may not want to have a relationship. If they are interested in a relationship, they probably take it very seriously, but may choose to remain celibate or alone. I would always rather be alone and celibate than with someone who gets on my tits in any way, um, always. So I have not really been in many bad relationships, but I haven't been in that many relationships. That's why it's, it's, it's quality over quantity. Um, in the main although yeah less said the better <laughs> about a certain one of those relationships um due to sensory issues will either really enjoy sex or strongly dislike it um i can you be both because i feel like i'm both i do really enjoy sex but only in brief periods and like like long sex is not for me long sex overrated um and uh and i can really see what's gross about sex like that's the thing if you i mean if if you've read my book which the the link is is always below if you've read my book particularly the stories fetus and the vagina of apocalypse um you you will see all the the gross out stuff that just gets to me about sex is is all in there um <laughs> often prefers the company of animals but not always due to sensory issues well i definitely prefer the company of animals and that was basically the full list to so say i will leave the link below if you want to see the full thing for yourself and reread it and all the rest of it but fucking like fucking everything there was completely nail on head so i, I saved all of it in my phone because at some point i will like my therapist who is a autism specialist has been trying to get me to write a letter to my family for ages about my autism and like how everything works and blah, 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 just explain some stuff to them. And I feel like including screenshots of that stuff would just be brilliant because it nails me so much. And it's, it's like, look, I'm not actually a giant dickhead. This is, this is actually like a category of person of whom I am one and this is what we're like, this is what we're like and trying to change that is, is not really going to happen. You know, anything, anything you try and change about that is me completely going against my base nature and can, can you just get that, can you just grasp it please, you know? Um, so I thought it was really interesting but uh, anyway, yeah, if any of this struck home with you, uh, let me know below and... Um, yeah, if there's more info actually out there on atypical autism, I'll, I'll probably have a bit of a Google later. But um, if you've come across anything interesting about all of this, then uh, drop those links below too. Um, but I, I thought it was it was interesting, and I think it's really cool that people are putting are compiling these lists, and because hopefully it means that more autistic females will be diagnosed young instead of when it's so late that they've had a nervous breakdown and now they have crippling anxiety and they're never going to be the same again you know and they've struggled through so much and or killed themselves because they didn't understand why they couldn't do life and everyone was telling them try harder try harder try harder until you break your brain or try harder until you get a stomach ulcer from stress or um, you're just lazy, you're just self-centered, you're a fully grown woman, why can't you cope with this, you know, all that shit um, that so many of us have had to go through and, you know, I was talking to someone on Instagram the other day who um, 
I think was in their 50s and was just getting diagnosed now. And that fucking made me think, my God, like I thought I had it bad. But of course, of course, there are people from generations before me who were in even more useless generations when it came to the diagnosis of of autism in females. And the, the fact that you can survive five decades without being diagnosed is a huge testament to your strength. If, you, if, if you're out that person I was talking to or anyone like them, like that is hardcore to have gone five decades without understanding why any of this is going on and happening to you like fuck um i don't know how far i would have made it without without that diagnosis in 2009 i really don't so um so i'm really glad they are recognizing that these are symptoms and traits and they are looking at them and hopefully diagnosing more females and realizing that it's it's not just a boy's disorder. We do know that having a female brain gives you an edge over most autistic males when it comes to social interaction. We do know that female autistics are generally more socially fluent than males. Um, so of course, of course, there are going to be other differences there with the differences in brains. There's, there's going to be a difference. Um, but anyway, this is a huge waffle. So I'm going to shut up now. But I just thought this was interesting. So uh, let me know if there are any other autism related topics you would like me to waffle about. And I will leave a list of my other autism related videos below if you want to check those out. And I'm going to do a shut up and go away now. So thank you for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>